You know what YouTube needs? More shows about cars. So this is the story of my car. If I can get the garage. Wait, which one? Yep. So I don't really know what I'm doing for the YouTube stuff or car stuff or any kind of stuff, but uh, I figured I'd give this a whirl. Um, my buddy Ken Mahoy and his son Nate have Spider Garage, um, and they've kind of motivated me to do stuff on my project and kind of document YouTube style maybe, how this thing goes. So I didn't take a lot of video when I started the project, but uh, I took a lot of pictures. So this is kind of going to be a, a video of pictures, if that makes sense. And for, uh, for lack of a better name, welcome to Sunbird Garage until I come up with something better. It's a lovely day. It's starting to snow here. So what is this? It is a 1980 Pontiac Sunbird Formula. Uh, they built uh, 187,000 Sunbirds in 1980, and only 1,987 were actually the formula option. And what was the formula option? Really, it was just a graphics package and heavier sway bars. This car was actually born as a four-cylinder four-speed car, so it wasn't setting the world on fire with performance for sure. So um, they only built 6,444 Sunbird formulas between 1977 and 1980. But, uh, so this is the story of my project. So I was gonna uncover it and reveal it, but that kind of gives away some of the mystery, I think. So we'll show it sooner or later, but this is where we're gonna start. I'm gonna show you where I got the car from, what it looked like when I brought it home, and the start of the project. So, a buddy of mine, Jerry, had this car down in North Carolina, and uh, I was working on a couple other Sunbirds. I had a red 1976 Sunbird Coupe and this silver 1980 Sunbird Coupe, uh, which I've done a lot of things with this car. You know, not actual work, but driving. I've done a couple hot rod power tours, a couple trips to Woodward. A lot of fun with this car even though it's all stock, all original. So got to talking to Jerry, thought about maybe converting my, uh, my red car into a formula clone. And he said, hey, I've got a real formula down here in North Carolina, why don't you come get it? It's got a balance. Maybe you can use it as parts if you can't restore the car. But I uh, said, why don't you just sell me the balance, Jerry? No, 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 can't sell you just the balance. You gotta buy the whole car. Like, uh, I've got two cars at home already. The wife's not going to be happy if I come home with a third. But, well, we came home with a third. And this is the story of that. So after an eight-hour drive down to North Carolina, I get down to Jerry's place. This car is pretty rough. Uh, it hasn't been titled since, I, I recall, 1993 or 1996. Uh, and it sat in this field for 30-plus years. The interior is toast, there's nothing here that's usable, um, but hey, it's only got 59,000 miles, so I guess that's a plus, right? Well, maybe not. The formula balance is here, but it's really not that usable, so we'll see what we can do with that. Maybe it could be salvaged, maybe, maybe not. Truly, that was one of the reasons why I wanted this car. Uh, I come down here to get that balance. Maybe I can use it on another car. Um, maybe this formula will just be a parts car. We'll see. but. That's not how it turned out, obviously. But here's the trim tag, and it is a true W66 Formula Sunbird. They only built 1,987 of these in 1980, and only 6,444 in the entire 1977 to 1980 uh, Sunbird Formula production run. So Jerry and I strike the deal. I think I paid a whopping $350 for this car and we load it up onto the trailer. And uh, it's funny now, it wasn't funny then. Uh, Jerry goes to get the title, comes out and goes, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I don't, the title's not in my name. What do you mean it's not in your name? Well, it's still in my 
ex-girlfriend's name from 1993, 1996, whenever this thing was last uh, last titled. I'm like, um, that's that's kind of an issue, Jerry. So he said, no, no, don't worry, it'll, it'll be okay. I'll, I'll get her to sign off on it. We're still we're still friendly. Uh, it won't be an issue. I'm like, okay. But I'm not lying. It was uh, very concerning to drive eight hours down there, buy a car, and then drive eight hours home, not really knowing if I'm going to get a title or not for it. It all worked out. Jerry came through. He got me the title, signed it over to me. So I do have a title in my name for it now. At this point, I've got two Sunbirds at home. I've got the 1976 Red Coupe, and I've got my 1980 Silver Coupe at home. There's really no room for a third car. So I uh, dropped this sucker off at my sister-in-law's house. Yeah, sorry, Ann. Uh, it sat there for, I think, a couple of weeks. I took all the uh, interior, what was left the interior, out of the car over there, threw all the garbage that was in the car away, the carpeting, all that stuff was toast, so it all got tossed. Um, after it sat there for a couple of weeks, I finally decided to drag it home to my garage to start the deconstruction. And I tried to document everything I possibly could, any stripes, any other markings, any kind of other details, how something was assembled because I wasn't really sure if there were manuals at this point that I could use as reference to reassemble this car when the time came. It was originally a four-cylinder, four-speed car, but the engine, transmission, steering column were all gone. They were all removed long before I got this car. Jerry actually had a small block Chevy in here for, I think, a very short period of time, but as you see it here, this is how I got it. There was nothing. The tail panel was gone, but every single sunbird hatchback of the air they they all lost their tail panels they all disintegrated over time either they didn't make them with enough uv protectant or something because i've not seen but a handful that were still intact and not uh, not disintegrated one of the interesting issues with this car was the right hand passenger side uh, a pillar it was completely obliterated it had uh, massive damage here Jerry said that his girlfriend was driving the car and she went off the road and smashed it into a uh, solid steel mailbox which just destroyed that A-pillar and I really was worried about how it was going to be, how hard that was going to be to replace and fix and it actually turned out to not be too difficult of a job. So now that the car is back in my garage at home, uh, I can spend a lot more time out here working on it and stripping it down to its uh, base components. So. Gutted the entire car. The interior, like I said, was completely toast. There was nothing salvageable here except for the, the hard part of the plastic dash and the metal part of the dash. Dash pad gone, gauge cluster gone. Uh, all the other trim bits were gone. Seat belts were all toast. Everything in the interior was gone in this car. I did find it interesting that Jerry replaced the driver's door on this car at one point with not just an ordinary door, but an actual formula door off of another Sunbird which is pretty uh, pretty rare, I would think. The door was still toast. Both doors were toast. This one was uh, crusty at the bottom. The other one was completely gone at the bottom. It's always funny what you find in a car that's been sitting around for 30 years when you clean it out. There are a couple of tapes in there. Poison, flesh and blood tape, and a uh, kiss tape. And uh, I actually took these over to my brother's house at one point and put them in the radio. One of them played okay, the other one didn't play at all hardly. It was very distorted. So who knows how long these have been stashed, stashed in that car. So at this point, it was just a matter of disassembling anything that was bolted to the car, removing it, and putting it aside if it was salvageable or, or maybe I could use it as a reference point later on in the process. I also found every single electrical connector was packed full of mud. I don't see how this is possible. It's not like bugs or wasps could build nests in there if these things were plugged together so I wonder if this car spent some time uh, underwater in a flood or something like that but yeah the entire wiring harness was toast so these next few pictures are just me walking around the car trying to document its condition its starting point um, I actually did measure a few of the stripe locations and took note of those so I could replicate those later on in the process you know, there's some there's some decent dents in a couple spots. There's some rust holes in a couple spots, but overall the car's fairly solid. That's me being optimistic, I guess. But really, anything that's bolted to the car wasn't salvageable. Anything that I could replace or find new or replacement parts for 
I was gonna have to do. Fenders were shot, didn't have a hood, hatch was shot, Jerry actually gave me another hatch to use. So it was gonna be a process to find fenders, a hood, tail panel, header panel, doors, you name it. Any part that was bolted to this car basically needed to be replaced. And then we get to the floors. The floors didn't look horrible for the most part, but after I got into it, there were some spots that were just really, really bad. The left front driver pan didn't look bad, but once you got into it, it was pretty bad all the way through the cowl and needed a lot of work. That was the part of the car that scared me the most. Even the cold air intake for the heating and air conditioning on this car was completely gone. You can see here, it's completely rotted off. So that's gonna take some work to replace. At some point, somebody cut a hole in the B pillar of the car. This is right behind the uh, the door jam uh, to add speakers, so that needs to be patched and welded back up. And since I said this was a four-speed car, they all have a weak point at the firewall where the clutch cable goes through, and it after after cycling the clutch a bunch of times, uh, it actually cracks the uh, the firewall here. And this one was cracked and poorly repaired, so that's going to need a lot of patching too. So basically I ripped this car all the way down to its base component, so it was just a rolling shell. Anything I could remove from the car, fenders, hood, doors, uh, interior, uh, heating and air conditioning parts, all got removed. Everything was out of this car except for the suspension at this point. And the next big process was going to be getting a rotisserie, getting it on the rotisserie, and then uh, removing the suspension for future work. So that's my first episode. I don't know if it's any good or not. I don't know if it's interesting or not. Interesting to me, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I think the next video I'll put together is one on uh, where I started to patch the car back together. It needed a lot of work, as you can tell. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what we'll do next. Thanks for watching.